Russia invades Ukraine despite sanctions imposed by the United States and its Western allies to try to deter it. Illinois considers legislation to kick people out of office if and when they're convicted of a felony. And Iowa moves forward with a bill that would require athletes who compete in school sports to do so in line with the gender at their birth. That's what we'll talk about this morning with Iowa Republican Party Chair Jeff Kaufman and former Rock Island Mayor Mark Schwiebert, a Democrat. Great to have you both on the program. Let's get started with Iowa and its bill that would require athletes in primary school and college to compete according to their gender at birth. It's seen mainly as a ban on transgender girls from playing girls' sports. The legislation cleared the state house and is on its way to the Senate, where it also seems to have enough support to pass there. Jeff, are state lawmakers trying to create a solution to a problem that doesn't exist? And what about the claim from Democrats this is a form of bullying? Yeah, well, not at all. I mean, it, we were asked, uh, the legislature was asked by the Iowa Athletic Association to deal with this issue. I was one of the few states in the country that has separate organizations for male sports and female sports, and they were asked to address that. So, you know, there's, if, if there is a solution in search of a problem, then I, I don't know why we would have had the question in the first place. Look, this is about parity. There's many, many people on both sides of the aisle that have done everything humanly possible to bring uh, women's sports and women's athletics on par with male, the whole Title IX push. And uh, what this is essentially saying, and I think it's in line with the vast majority of Iowans, is that you, you are, if you are biologically male, it's inherently unfair to compete in a female sport where most of the time, uh, if there is a record that's been set for a, uh, in, in that female sport, there are males throughout the entire state that naturally can break that. This is a matter of fairness. And I think that's where the Republicans have come down on. And quite frankly, I think that's where Iowans have come down on. So I look for this to go to the governor's desk. Mark, are Democrats going overboard when it comes to trying to satisfy its core constituents, constituencies? It's one thing to have empathy, but shouldn't there be a recognition of genetic differences that apply here? You know, on this subject, I don't really disagree too much with what Jeff has said. I do think that particularly when it comes to transgender individuals who are male converting to female, there can be a real issue of parity and fairness. Um, I think that uh, young women, girls who have grown up and prepared in the sport and now are forced to compete with someone who has genetically advantaged because of the fact that he had different hormones when he was going, he, now she, was going through adolescence. There's a certain issue of fairness here, and I think that in the interest of fairness towards women uh, and creating a balanced uh, playing field for women's athletics and men's athletics, to allow someone who's disadvantaged in that way, or advantaged unfairly in that way, it doesn't, to me, make a great deal of sense. That's certainly securing transgender rights in every other way, Sir I'm sure both of you do agree on there. Illinois state lawmakers could change the rules for themselves on other people who hold public office in the state. A proposal in the state's election committee would keep people from continuing to hold public office if they are convicted of a felony while in office. This would apply to people like former Representative Louis Arroyo, as well as a current Chicago City Council person. He pleaded guilty to federal wire fraud this month, Arroyo did. Uh, isn't this a matter of common sense? Why is this only happening now? What do you think the chances are it passes given Illinois' history with ethics legislation, Mark? Well, I think it should. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, uh, I took a look at the Constitution because I know when I was mayor, if a question came up about someone being convicted of a felony, it was assumed they were disqualified from office. And Article 13, Section 1 of the Constitution actually has a prohibition against someone being elected to a constitutional office who is a convicted felon uh, or serving in that office. So I think this would simply bring the legislation in line. Uh, with what the Constitution provides for, and so I think that makes great sense. If a person violates a law that rises to the level of a felony in our state uh, or in our country, that should be a disqualification from serving in public office, at least until they have paid uh, the consequences of that, paid their dues uh, for, the, for, the, for the wrongful offense. Jeff, I think people would be surprised that this would even need to be a law. I, it is, and, and I'll be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever had a conversation about this, Jim. And I, 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 again, I know Mark and I are supposed to be squabbling back and forth, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat back what, what he said on the previous question. I, I don't, I don't have a lot to disagree with him in regards to that. And uh, you know, it, it, it's an interesting law, and I, I can't believe that uh, Iowans, if we uh, began to have some high-profile issues, wouldn't uh, agree with this uh, movement wholeheartedly.
Right, let's get to our last topic here, certainly a complicated one. Russia's war with Ukraine now underway. Vladimir Putin calls the invasion a special military operation, if there's a euphemism there, and warns any country that tries to interfere with consequences they've never seen before. Call that a direct threat against the United States and its allies. The U.S. and its allies already administered sanctions, first going after Russian finances to some extent, then President Biden ordered sanctions against the company building Russia's Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, going after Russia's energy infrastructure could hit the country where it hurts. And then on Thursday, the president added restrictions on four Russian banks and technology exports. The sanctions didn't seem to get Putin out of Crimea under the Obama administration. How effective can they be? How much further to, should the United States and its allies go, Jeff? Well, I mean, I, I like the direction uh, where they're heading. They're bringing NATO along. Uh, two thirds of the two, fir two thirds of the world right now are are together on this. I, you know, I there are a few more sanctions that could be leveled. The uh, you know the, the exports of oil stop. Uh, part of the, the, the SWIFT banking program, but where they're at right now, I think is a good direction in terms of the, what I, I have no reason to doubt will be devastating uh, to Russia. It, it's, a, it's a tight line that, uh, that, that they are walking right now because I don't think anyone in this country has an appetite for ground troops in the Ukraine. I don't think anybody has an appetite right now to invade uh, Ukrainian airspace. But I think everybody has a complete distaste. And people uh, in my generation, I know, uh, remember the Cold War. And I, I, this smells an awful lot like recreating the old Soviet Union. And, and I want to say one other thing, Jim. I know a couple of times, you know, I complained when, when, when Donald Trump was president that, you know, there's times when you have to wish your president luck. And I, quite frankly, was a little irritated. When Democrats didn't do that, let me say specifically that I hope these sanctions work. And I hope that uh, uh, that President uh, Biden's efforts uh, to unite uh, NATO and to continue to aggressively push these uh, sanctions, I hope they work. And I mean that sincerely. Mark, how much pain does Russia need to feel from sanctions for a difference to be made? Well, I, I think that they're going to, we'll find out very soon because I think the sanctions are going to be tough. And I appreciate the direction that President Biden's following on this. As Jeff said, I don't think the American public has an appetite for another land war after we've just ended that extended and, 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 and futile effort in Afghanistan. Uh, but at the same time, I think we recognize that Vladimir Putin is a global bully and he has to be stopped. And some of the things that he's trying right now are the kinds of things that were tried by Hitler and others in the past. And if they're allowed to get away with them without consequence, they'll simply embolden them to do more. China already, I think, is taking note and it could have impacts on Taiwan. So a strong, tough response Targeted at the people who are the malefactors, the bad, guy, the bad actors here, makes a great deal of sense. And the fact that they're going after Putin and some of his cronies directly with these initial sanctions, and then we'll be going after the Russian economy, which is already in bad shape, will have its consequences on Putin at home where it hurts. Uh, and it's good if, it, if we can hit him where it hurts, because he is the wrongdoer, not the Russian soldiers that are simply following his orders. He's the wrongdoer, and he and his oligarchs are the ones that should be made to pay for this. And that's one of the main targets of these um, uh, economic sanctions. So I think it's it, it, in the right direction. And, and as Jeff said before, I think it's a, it's a very useful thing that Biden, unlike his immediate predecessor, I might add, has worked closely with our allies in Europe and elsewhere uh, to bring uh, the full thrust of our collective might to bear, economic might to bear against Russia. And, and Putin's going to feel it. And we'll see how this develops because it's very early in that conflict. Mark Schwieber, Jeff Kaufman, thank you both for the conversation. As always, be safe. Now, our question of the week. What do you think the United States should respond, or how do you think the United States should respond to the Russian invasion of Ukraine? Send your answer by email to ForTheRecordWHBF.com or respond to this post on Facebook at the local 4 News WHBF-TV page or on my page.